sebelum lanjut menonton video ini, yuk tekan tombol subscribe dan nyalakan lonceng notifikasinya agar kami lebih semangat untuk memberikan video-video menarik lainnya buat kamu. Oke, okay. I would think that a lot of the laymen would think that snoring is normal. Everybody is snoring, the whole family snores, okay? But the important thing is that you have to look for symptoms more than snoring. So if you think that they are actually gasping for breath, choking at night, you have to move them at night to make sure that they are really breathing. That is one sign that they are not only snoring, you may have sleep apnea, you are actually choking and not having enough oxygenation to your body. Mm. In the day, the patient itself okay, can present with very, very bad headaches and being very, very sleepy. Okay, so this you need to see a doctor because they are not only snoring, you may have other problems such as sleep apnea, which you, you need to see an ENT to get the sleep test done, to get the diagnosis and determine the severity and the management. anything from the if you if you look at the ear compartments it can be the outer ear the middle ear the inner ear okay so again what can cause it many many causes from nerve degeneration from an elderly patient so you need to look at the age of the patient again if you're talking about children very rare that patients will actually tell you in a child that a child is complaining of a noise okay so commonly we're talking about perhaps young adults, adults, or the more elderly patients, okay? So anything in the ear, outer ear, we can think of ear infections, wax, discharge, or even a tympanic membrane perforation. Your eardrum may be broken. Your middle ear may have problems, be it water or infection, okay? The more elderly patients, okay, can have hearing um, loss associated with tinnitus okay we normally would take a history first looking for the associated ear symptoms is there pain discharge infection the year before is the eardrum intact we do a clinical examination through a ear otoscopy and commonly we would also do a audiogram we would actually do a hearing test to make sure that the inner ear function is fine to then conclude that it is tinnitus from infection, from nerve degeneration, and nothing, nothing too serious, okay? Okay, the history itself, I, I need to examine it a little bit more. Okay, allergic rhinitis should not only have the onset at 54 years old. A patient commonly presents earlier, okay, in the young teenagerhood with sensitive nose. Okay, so we need to get the diagnosis right first. And I normally would ask that, is there any associated asthma? Is that itchy nose, runny nose? Okay. Um, if yeah, <laughs> commonly, okay. okay um, if he comes to see me, I would probably I would like to examine the patient with a flexible nasal endoscopy, okay? Um, because allergic rhinitis commonly both sides of the nose is blocked, okay? Oh, if okay. the patient is compliant, the next thing I would like to ask the patient: You have all the medications. Oh, have you used it correctly and every day? 
Okay, because mm -hmm. nasal steroidal sprays do not improve nasal symptoms if you use it as and when you want. It, it doesn't work. Okay, so commonly, I would say if you are a good patient, you have used your nasal spray in the right direction, right nose, right corner of the eye every day for at least three to four weeks and your nose is still blocked, it is time for me to assess you to see if the rest of the nose is clear before I decide to do any nasal procedures. Terima kasih telah menonton video ini. Jangan lupa subscribe channel Tekon TV. Share video ini jika kamu mendapatkan manfaat darinya. Terima kasih.